Welcome to Traxos Tool Time. Ho, ho, ho. Hope you're excited. As far as our opening hand goes, it's dumb, but I like it. Uh, we've got uh, five lanes in the hand. We have two six drop uh, artifacts, but um, yeah, we'll make it work. That's kind of uh, playing an artifact deck. You, I mean, we've got lands in the hand. We've got a, a mana source and a way to just cash in some card draw. So I will take it. Um, if we wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, we could certainly mulligan, but. Um, you can't live the Tron Dreaming Commander without at least having one piece of Tron land, so <laughs> that's what we're going to go for. Um, I guess anything we need to lead off with, everything's going to come into play. Um, let's just go and lead off with Ink Moth Nexus, and then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. We're playing Traxos, Mr. Tool Time himself. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, trample, Traxos enters the battlefield tapped and does not untap during your untapped step. Then whenever you cast a historic spell... Untap Traxos. That's going to be an artifact, legendary, or a saga. Uh, playing against Tetsuko, uh, Fugitive. Uh, creatures who control the power or toughness, one or less, cannot be blocked. And this is a uh, very, very strong card. Now, this is kind of becoming one of my favorite cards that came out of the Dominaria set. And it's just such a good, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I can use it in my Filibusters deck. It's just a really good way to, to kind of end up with a, a really fun board state. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll get down Command Beacon and we'll go and pass the turn. So since we are looking at a turn four Traxos, we're going to hold on to Lightning Greaves. And that'll be a good way for us to get down Traxos, untap it, and give it some protection. And that kind of puts us on a uh, three turn Commander game clock with Traxos was having trample at a sitting at a 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, we did cover Tetsuko, covered tracks. Let's give a quick shout out to MTGO Traders. Uh, if you want to get into Magic Online, play yourself some Commander, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, whatever your floats your Magic boat, be sure to check out MTGO Traders. And also, shout out to InkedGaming.com. Uh, use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off your order or click the, click the link down in the description below. And that also should enable the, uh, the coupon code to be active and you'll help the channel out at the same time. All right, so now it is officially free time. And, ooh, drawn to Karn. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good draw. We just need to get to the uh, the quick mana. That's what we're looking for. Uh, let's go Throne of the High City, and then we're going to kick it back over to our opponent. So once we get down Karn, we can at least go for that minus three on Tetsuko. Um, Karn's going to smash him <laughs> as he peeks around the corner. And then at least next turn, we're looking at Traxxas. So hopefully, once we just kind of get down Dreamstone, Hedron, um, that'll really kind of open us up on mana. But yeah, as far as this Traxxas deck, if you haven't seen it before, this is pretty much just artifact good stuff. You know, there's times where we end up with a quick Mishra's Factory. And we get down Traxos and then just start going commander damage win, which is a lot of fun. And then um, there's other times where we just end up getting done a ton of ramp and go for Karn. So right now we're kind of stuck on the Traxos game plan. But uh, either way, it's uh, a really fun deck to pilot. Uh, whenever it deals to combat damage to player, return up to that many target permanents that player controls to their hand. So we've got ourselves a, a little bit of a clock with that Coliseum. Um, let's go Urza's Factory. You know, let's see if our opponent wants to bite on this Traxos. Yeah, we can get down Traxos, and that'll be a, a great thing for them to uh, go for the, the Constable. And that way we don't really have to worry about... Um, we can keep making the land drops. We can get down Traxos again, untap it. Uh, we also get in a position to where if we do run into something like Ancient Tomb, we can get in for some commander damage. But it is kind of funny playing a Tetsuko deck uh, versus uh, Traxos, because it's just kind of like all these little people... <laughs> trying to fight this huge Traxos. Like, if you don't know how big Traxos is, uh, where my mouse is, those are houses right there. Like, I, when I was doing the art, I didn't realize that, but, like, those are houses up there. Like, he just came up out of, a like, a neighborhood. And I know the Homeowners Association was not thrilled about that. But anyway, that's what Traxos does. He destroys neighborhoods. So, anyway, if you didn't know how big he was, that's how big he was. He is a Homeowners Association's uh, worst nightmare. They hate him. Unless you don't want to belong in a homeowners association, you want to hire Traxos to destroy every other house. That way, you're the only house in there, and then you can become the homeowners association. You can certainly do that. So that's another line of play that you can go for if you want to contact Traxos to go for that. If you find yourself in that situation, but uh, oh yeah, so homeowners. I know this is kind of random, but we just got a lot of land drops to make and uh, to get to that Hedron archive, and I wasn't expecting a Tetsuko to be so quick. Um, so homeowners association, um, where I live, I'm not in one, but like I love good homeowners association stories. So this one guy, I forget which college he went to. Let's just say uh, LSU or something like that. So he put his LSU football flag out, and like that was on Saturday, and then on Sunday he still had it out, and then like the person that checks stuff uh, around the neighborhood like gave him a fine for leaving the flag out, 
And he's like, hey, like you didn't take it down after the football day. And so that made him mad. And so what he ended up doing is he, he checked in like the bylaws. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got scoured on our land. Um, let's go. Uh, I guess we go Urza's mine. But we're just basically kind of landlocked at this point right now. We can go Wayfair's Bobble. Put it on the battlefield. That's about our only way to kind of get ahead on this. So let's go Wayfair's Bobble. That's the only way to kind of get ahead on lane drops. So let's go for this activation. And I, I promise I'm not going to skip out on that story. Go wayf Wayfair's Bobble, grab ourselves a waste, and then we're going to kick it back over there. Uh, but yeah, so he read in the bylaws that you're allowed to fly, fly your, you know, any sports team's flag the day that they're playing. And so he looked at his college schedule and then like, like the swim team played on this one day, the softball team played on this one day, this like the math team was playing on this one day. So he printed out his schedule. And so he left it up like on a Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, because technically LSU was playing that day. It just wasn't football. And so anyway, the homeowners association guy got mad, but he was right. I don't know why. <laughs> We're just going to lose the game really quick to this Coliseum. So that's why I was just kind of I'll tell you that story. Yeah, long story short, he is uh, tracks us as a homeowners association's uh, worst nightmare. All right, so now unfortunately, we're just kind of under this Coliseum lock, so we need to find some sort of answer for Constable. Um, other than that, I think Constable's just basically going to get it. Staff of Nin, uh, we can't do that. Let's go Urza's Mine. Yeah, if we end up going Urza's Mine. We can go for Traxos. Maybe they, they bite on the Traxos to send Traxos back to the hand, and then next turn we go for Lightning Greaves or something, because that'll put us in a position to go. But even then, with all these creatures on the battlefield, uh, with these Captain's Claws, it's really going to be hard for us to stop these uh, Captain's Claws. So we'll at least get down Traxos and see what we can do about that. But you can see how good Tetsuko is. You know, It does help that we're not in a deck that has a, an abundance of spot removal. But you know, this is... Uh, just get down a bunch of little creatures and they can't be blocked. And when you have a bunch of creatures on the battlefield that can't be blocked, that is uh, that is some good magic right there. All right, so we got the uh, the ally token swinging in again. Uh, we got to take this damage. That's going to put us down to two. And then let's see what they end up bouncing back with the console. They're going to bounce tracks us back to the hand, but I think that's going to get it on this one. So let's see what, uh, see what our draw is. I don't really think there's much that we could rip into. Yeah, good game. Pot is going to get on this one. So anyway, Pot is going to get it. We're going to scoop this one up. And if you enjoyed the Homeowners Association talk, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Traxos Tool Time. Tool Time grunt indeed. As far as opening hand goes, uh, we got Urza's Tower. Go yeah, we'll keep on this one. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we hit that third land drop. And then we also do have one of the towers in our hand, which I'm really excited about that. That's... Uh, it's always fun trying to live the Tron dream in Commander, so let's get down Urza's Tower, and then uh, anything else we're going to go and pass the turn. We're playing Traxos, Mr. Tool Time himself, Trample. Uh, whenever Traxos enters the battlefield, enters the battlefield tapped and does not untap during our untap step, then whenever we cast a Historic Spell, and if you're keeping score at home, a Historic Spell is an artifact, legendary, or a saga, we get to untap Traxos, and oh, there we go, Everflowing Chalice. That's exactly what we want to see. Let's go Everflowing Chalice with Multi-Kicker. Um, if you get ahead of yourself and... Just cast it straight up sometimes. It's not going to give you the results that you want. Uh, it will let you cast it for free, though. <laughs> but uh, you don't get any extra mana from it. Uh, playing against Bramaz, the uh, general and leader of all the kitty cats. And also, a little bit of a Dorothy heads up. Dorothy's in my lap currently right now. So this is very fitting uh, that we're playing against the god of all kitty cats. Uh, let's get down Shrine. Actually, the Oketra is the god of all kitty cats. But uh, I would say Bramaz is probably the, uh, the general of all kitty cats. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. Okay, so let's go Traxos. Let's get down Traxos. Um, the way this deck is set up is that we can definitely get a really good commander clock going on our opponent. And uh, we are looking at 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. So getting some commander damage in, at least kind of down early, is a great way to kind of keep our opponent under some sort of pressure. And that's certainly what we want to do. Um, outside of the ramp, we can also go for stuff like Worm Coil Engine. Just kind of some good value plays. But let's cover Bramaz really quick. Uh, Vigilance, and then whenever Bramaz attacks, create a 1-1 one, one white cat soldier creature token uh, with Vigilance that's attacking. And then whenever blocks uh, same thing get yourself a extra kitty cat on the battlefield so at this point we can go for swift foot boots and with shields down yeah i really like kind of going for shields down um if our opponent just simply just has a source to plowshare or pl uh, path to exile they're they're definitely going to be able to kind of complicate this uh, game plan so uh, let's go for traxos let's go and push in would have liked to get down the seer's lantern but um, i like this line of play a little bit better 
you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to get a good Traxos video. Um, either you end up with some really quick commander damage, or you end up not really hitting your mana, or different things like that. But either way, it's still pretty fun. So I end up maybe just kind of splicing together a few Traxos videos into one big one. But I'm just going to get down three and Dynamo. And also, we cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to MDGO Traders. If you're in the market to get into Legacy, Modern, Popper, Penny Dreadful, Commander, whatever sort of eternal magic format there is out there, even Standard. Uh, hit up MTGO Traders, it will certainly take care of you. And Sears Lantern, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, Hedron Archive. That'll put us at that. Yeah, I guess we just end up going Hedron Archive. That's really going to allow us to kind of get some good ramp going. So let's go Hedron Archive. That'll give us two mana. Unfortunately, this is not going to allow us to get anything else down for the turn. But we are keeping on for Ugin, keeping on for Warm Coil Engine, and all is dust. So let's go and push in with Traxos, the tool time. And then I'll hopefully, if we get in for 14... All right, so we're going to see Burma's block, and we're perfectly fine with this because that's going to get them kind of going on that game plan of getting that commander tax going up on Burma. So even if they do end up blocking, uh, getting that death touch, yeah, it's not the end of the world. We'll still get in for some trample damage. And now that we're ramping, it's really going to allow us to get down Traxxas again. So let's go and take care of uh, Burma's and the Cat Soldier. There we go. And it's going to be 9 commander damage and pass it back over to our opponent. Also, let's give a shout out to inkgaming.com. Let's say that you're in the market for a custom playmat or any sort of custom dice bag, anything like that. Um, hit up inkgaming.com. Be sure to use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off your order and help the channel out at the same time. So, it's a wonderful way to... And also, let's say that you have uh, a thumbnail of mine that you really enjoy and you're like, man, that would look really good as my desktop wallpaper on my home computer for personal use only, uh, be sure to check the description out. I've started to put a link down to some of the uh, wallpaper versions of my thumbnail, so that way you can have some fun and show it off to your friends. But now, it is officially free time. We can have some fun. And that's going to be, what are we going to be doing next turn? So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. We are sitting at six mana. Uh, what we can end up doing is actually getting down um, Worm Coil Engine. That would be definitely a good way for us to kind of combat Sun Titan. And then we do hit the lane drop. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, just a little bit far away from Ugin. Man, if we really want to deal with Sun Titan, I think a good opportunity for us would be All is Dust. I think that would be good. I mean, this this is one of the fun things about, or at least, you know, it is a little bit of a downside playing an all-colorless deck, but uh, having a one-sided board wipe is a wonderful way to really kind of help propel this deck. So now we're kind of in this position to where we can go for Traxos next turn, or we can simply just go for the value play with Lorm Coil Engine, and that'll kind of force them to have some sort of answer uh, for whatever threat we get down. Now, we can end up going for Ugin. We might end up getting that down, Um Ugin's kind of one of those. We use it in the worst case scenario, but uh, man, they've got some <laughs> they've got some good stuff out there. And this is a pretty cool build of uh, Bramaz being a really heavy in, uh, artifact build. All right, so we draw into Pilgrim's Eye. Traxos is going to cost six total mana. One, two, yeah, I think we, yeah, I like doing that because we get down Traxos. It's going to be one, two, three, four. And that'll give us just enough mana to end up going for the Swiftfoot Boots equip onto Traxos. Now that does put them in a position where they do have um they do have death touch with the collar. But if we do end up hitting that eighth land drop for the turn, or at least getting to eight mana somehow, uh, what we can do is go for that Ugin and we'll probably end up going for that minus X just to get rid of Bramaz on the battlefield and just really kind of clear the way for Traxos to start Ooh. We got ourselves a game, right? So uh, Ugin's fair game now. We got Elspeth on the battlefield. Uh, we definitely need to find an answer for that. Um, the good thing about Ugin is that we can get it down for eight mana. We can go for that minus six, which is still going to keep uh, Ugin on the battlefield. And uh, it's going to get around that indestructible clause. And uh, I don't know. I just love it. I love imagining Bramaz just out there with all this equipment on there. I love playing Voltron decks and playing against them too. All right, so we draw into Worn Power Stone. I think at this point, we just simply just go for Pilgrim's Eye, basic land, put it into our hand. Yeah, let's do that. We could go for one Coil Engine. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. That'll be pretty much our entire turn. If we dump Pilgrim's Eye, then we can still kind of deploy some extra mana out. So let's go Pilgrim's Eye. That's going to be one, two, three. And that's going to be a land drop for the turn. We can survive another hit from our Maz. There's nothing too crazy from our opponent on their side of the battlefield. And then hopefully that'll kind of clear the way for us to go for a really nice Ugin. They are sitting at one card in the hand. Um, so we can, and we've got a very nice assortment of stuff in our hand too. So let's grab this waste. Let's get the waste down. And that's going to be one, two, three. And that'll actually work. Yeah, that'll work out perfectly. So we get down Sears Lantern, and that'll give us just enough to go for Worn Power Stone. 
Um, we could put the Swiftfoot boots onto uh, Pilgrim's Eye and swing in at Elspeth, but if we're going to be going for the Ugin anyway, that's, you know, I might as well just go and get down the lane drop for the turn and just really, you can see how if we ended up going for that, not getting this down, you see how much we just busted wide open on mana, and that's really going to make it a lot easier for us to go for Ugin. And following, once we finally get down Traxos, and I think I might have missed this in our hand. Yeah, I think they, no, they, excuse me, they went for the destroy ability. So at least with not of this world, that's going to give us some sort of option to kind of stop this, uh, any sort of spot removal from our opponent. Uh, once we finally do get down Traxos, in addition to the swift foot boots. So let's say that we go for the equip, they go for spot removal, we can at least still stop it. So we're going to go ahead and throw Pilgrim's Eye in front of this Burmaz. Thank you, Pilgrim's Eye. You certainly did a very good service today. Uh, that's going to put us up to, uh, put us down to 19 and that's going to put them to 30. So all right, we draw to Mannequin. Yeah, let's go for Ugin. They're, they're uh, hell-bent. They have no cards in the hand. And this is going to be a wonderful way for us to kind of clean this uh, cluttered kitty cat board state up. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to get down to Ugin. And I think at this point, we need to go minus six. So that's going to be X. Yeah, that's going to be minus six. We're going to one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to clear everything out. That will leave some of the artifacts. Oh, look at that. That is... That is wonderful. Um, we could get down Mannequin if we wanted to. But I think at this point, if we're trying to go for an Atraxos untap, if we can go for Swiftfoot Boots, um, we're going to hold on to Mannequin at this point right now. Um, one of the things that you want to do, especially following up a board wipe like that, is uh, get down Traxos, have some sort of artifact in the hand uh, to cast that, and that way we can untap untap Traxos and really show our opponent some really fun tool time. But yeah, as far as tool time goes, so I don't know, I think I'm going to start calling this deck uh, Traxos tool time because I'm going to start playing it more. But I used to watch a ton, ton of tool time growing up. And if you haven't seen the show, you should go back and watch it. It's definitely, it is 90s sitcom, 100%, but it is still, uh, still a lot of fun. All right, so what, let's go for Traxos. It's going to be one, two, three. Yeah, that was like my jam when I'd get off get off school, just come home and the local channel would, I don't think I watched it live. I would just watch reruns of it, but, uh, I really enjoyed the show. I'll just go swift foot boots onto track. So it's going to be one activation. Like I mentioned, if that, okay, we're going to get that to stick. Uh, let's go for mannequin. That'll give us, give us at least some sort of blocker, uh, for Ugin and also give us the same opportunity to swing in since Bermas does not have that touch. So we go for Ugin deals three damage to any target. I guess at this point, and Bramaz is indestructible, so that's really not going to matter. So we're going to start sending some of these up top. Three damage to our opponent. Uh, put them down to 27. And let's go and swing in with uh, Traxos. They can get a cat swinging in with Ugin, but we need to be aggressive on this one. Uh, we can push past that. Um, get in for a little bit of damage. And then uh, maybe even get a little bit extra mana. Go for something like Walking Ballista. But we certainly need to deal with that shield. Because you can see... Um, we're kind of just getting in for two points of damage, but we can do it little by little. Uh, that'll certainly help. Now, if we do end up getting down Walking Ballista, what we can do is uh, we can pop that uh, we can pop that uh, cat token, and that'll keep it off the battlefield. So, sorry, Dorothy, that's, that's what we got to do. But uh, but yeah, Tool Time. It's one of those shows that I, don't know, I just grew up with watching it. So I'm sure some of the uh, the viewers around my age probably watched the show growing up. But uh, I would watch that, and I'd watch a lot of The Simpsons, and that was kind of my jam growing up. But uh, but yeah, Tool Time Grind. If you don't know what it is, basically, uh, Tim Allen was, uh, he was a family man, and then he would, oh, excuse me, they've got the uh, Whisper Silk Cloak out there, so it's going to be unblockable on Ugin. Um, but basically, he was uh, he had a show called Tool Time, and he'd always just really kind of ramp up um, any sort of tools, make it super powerful, and it always, to some sort of comedic effect, it would end up... Uh, we got Burma swinging at three. It always end up kind of derailing the show. All right, we're going to go let that come on through because Burmaz is swinging in at Ugin, and Burmaz is unblockable at this point right now. It's going to take care of Ugin. And thankfully, we're not under really any sort of commander damage pressure from our opponent. Uh, we are looking at six commander damage, but we are sitting at 18. So we need to give a little bit of action moving on our side. And then we draw into Treasure Keeper. So at this point, we do need definitely need to cast an artifact. I think we just tap out for a really big walking ballista. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. So let's go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because we would just want to get as much damage on the battlefield as possible. It's going to be 10 total mana. So let's go walking ballista. Uh, X is going to be five. And the good thing about that is it's going to untap Traxos too. Okay, we're going to get down walking ballista. Let's go and swing in with Traxos. 
And what we can do is uh, next turn we can kind of keep that counter going with that four mana activation on Walking Ballista. So it's going to push in. Oh, and excuse me, we could have got Mannequin. I, I do apologize about that. That would have been an extra counter. A little bit of a uh, overlook on my part talking about tool time. Okay, so they're going to block. Let's go. They're going to get that extra token. Let's click OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Walking Ballista to pop both of those tokens. And we should be able to do that before we go to uh, damage. So we're going to remove a counter, hit one of the cat tokens. Kind of like whack-a-mole. Um, hit one of the cat tokens and hit another cat. Oh, nope. Need to go for a activation. There we go. Uh, hit another cat token. And that allows us to kind of get us up to about 14 total damage uh, that we've dealt to um, our opponent in commander damage. There we go. Put this up to 14. And then anything else. Mm, I guess we could... No, excuse me, they get the Death Touch too, so that's going to take care of him. We can go for that next turn. I guess we'll just go and put the Swift Foot Boots onto uh, Walking Ballista. Yeah, at this point right now, we're just really trying to work towards that commander damage. It's going to be one of the best ways that we can kind of combat this indestructible cat general over there at this point right now. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we are getting the commander tax going up on uh, Traxos, but thankfully we have a ton of mana and um, trying to keep some uh, good artifact cards in the hand to kind of make sure that we can untap Traxos and go to town. Um, another thing that we can do is we can swing in with the Wormcoil Engine. Ooh, Mana Vault. Okay, so I guess at this point, I like Mana Vault. That's going to be a wonderful way for us to untap Traxos. Wormcoil Engine is certainly good in this matchup too. I guess we just get rid of not of this world. I mean, our opponent's really not they don't have a ton of card draw at this point right now. Uh, so what we can do is basically just... Uh, you know, we'll try to go for Wormcoil next turn. We'll see how much Traxos commander damage is. I think that's... I think it was 6, 8. Might be 10 total mana. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, we still got the mana. We can also still get down Mana Vault. We'll see how they decide to swing in. I think at this point, we can definitely outrace them in commander damage uh, quicker with Bramaz. So if that's kind of their game plan, I would definitely... I'm trying to figure out what we can... With Shroud from Whisper Silk Cloak, that's going to be really hard for us to deal with. Um, one of the good things about playing an artifact deck like this is we have access to a lot of universal removal. It does come at a very steep cost, and it's going to be uh, like 7 mana. But we do have a couple different spells in here that can definitely take care of Whisper Silk Cloak or something like that. So uh, we'll see what we draw into. And then we do have a couple different uh, card draw sources in here. Book of Wrath, and then uh, something, I can't remember the other one, but uh, that's another way for us to... Ooh, Hangerback Walker. Okay, so we tap out for a really big hangerback walker, throw it in front of Bramaz, or we can just, if we can find some sort of way to sacrifice it, that would be another way that we can get that done. Man, I still think we end up going Traxos. So let's tap out for Traxos. It's going to be one, two. We'll worry about hangerback walker next turn. We get down Traxos. Let's uh, cast Mana Vault. Let's going to untap Traxos. And then we're going to go and shift the, the uh, Swift Foot Boots over onto Traxos. Okay, let's go and push in again. And that should allow us to get in for three more points of damage. It's going to increase it up to 17. And the Mana Vault, once again, the Mana Vault is going to keep us on that same game plan of getting Traxos in and out. But this is going to be the quickest way we can really kind of stop what's going on uh, from our opponent. Okay, let's going to be another Cat Token. Let's go for the, uh, the Walking Ballista Activations. Okay, so it's going to allow us to get in for three more commander damage. It's going to put them up to 17 commander damage. And then uh, we could tap down Mana Vault to protect uh, Walking Ballista, but I think at this point we'll simply just go and pass the turn. And then uh, anything else, we're going to kick it over to our opponent. So next turn, we've got three from Mana Vault. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we will end up having 14 mana. That'll give us a little bit of extra mana to kind of play around with. And... Uh, because I think we swing in one more time, that's going to put it at... But we do need to get an additional counter on Walking Ballista, too. That's something we also need to work towards. Because that's also going to complicate us getting in for some sort of commander damage. Um, once we kind of run out of these Walking Ballista triggers. What we could do is kind of take a turn off. And uh, get a few extra counters on Walking Ballista. But we'll kind of see what our opponent decides to go for. Off of the Stoneforge Mystic uh, search. Okay, and they're going to end up going for Batter Skull, which is going to put a 4-4 Vigilance and Lifelink on the battlefield. It's definitely going to allow them to uh, 
They can equip the Batter Skull onto Bramaz if they want to, and that'll really kind of get that uh, commander damage going for Bramaz. But this has certainly been a good game. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any lines of play earlier in the game that I might have missed being Chatty Cathy, but I don't think... I mean, maybe we could have been a little bit more aggressive with Ugin or something like that, but... Uh, this is uh, certainly turned into an interesting game. All right, so going to put Batter Skull onto Bramaz. It's going to be a 7 8. That's going to be. Huh, man, we're going to need Walking Ballista to stick around, too, for sure. Okay, that's going to be 16. Puts it down to 6. I'm not going to pay for Mana Vault. And then we draw into Monolith. Man, and I think with that last swing, because they go for Whisper Silk Cloak, equipped, that's going to make it unblockable next turn. Yeah, I think they're going to get it. Even if we just deploy the entire crew out, that's going to be lethal with the Whisper Silk Cloak activation. Hmm. I think. Well, let's go for a Hedron Archive. Let's crack and draw some cards, because this is not looking good. Rogue's Passage. Okay, man, where was Rogue Passage a long time ago? So we go for, is anything from Trading Post, Return Artifact Card from our Graveyard to our Hand. That's Ugin Pilgrim's Eye, which is not going to do much. So we get down Rogue's Passage. But then once again, Traxxas has gotten up so high, we don't have enough mana. It's going to be 12 total damage. Man, I think our opponent's going to get it on this one. Oh, no. <laughs> it came to our opponent. Yeah, I guess we'll still deploy some stuff out. We'll get Warm Coil Engine out. Maybe they don't end up blocking, but I think they're going to get it on this one. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest, I'm not realizing we should have blocked with either Mannequin or Walking Ballista last turn. And I definitely would have gone for that, but unfortunately... um. I just I knew they shifted the Whisper Silk Cloak around, but I forgot that they didn't put it back on. That's why I kind of let that last hit go through. Okay, so we got Treasure Keeper. Yeah, we get that down. I guess we go so for Swift Foot Boots onto Warm Coil Engine. But even then, yeah, let's just go and pass. I think our opponent's going to get it on this one. So. Yeah, I think if we end up blocking last turn, they don't get in from that commander damage. But to be perfectly honest, I mean, I've been, I was used to Bramaz having that Whisper Silk Cloak on, on the entire game, and I was just used to it swinging in for combat. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be different. Okay, discard a card. I guess we'll definitely get rid of Thought Vessel. It's not going to help us out too much at this point right now. Um, they can end up going Gilded Lotus. Yeah, I guess they get the Whisper Silk Cloak onto Bramaz, and that should. Yeah, there they go. Yeah, that's going to be game. We came to our opponent. We're going to see Bramaz, the uh, the Kitty Cat General, take down Traxxas. So you can see how close we got him. We got down to 17. We got down to Ugin. But uh, unfortunately, our opponent's going to be able to uh, close it out on this one. So definitely good game to our opponent. Uh, they're going to knock us down off commander damage. Yeah, that, that's definitely a misplay on my part. I'm letting Bramaz swing in last time. But like I mentioned, unfortunately, between recording sometimes and uh, I'm recording after work. So... I am a little bit tired. Sometimes uh, letting little lines of play like that slip through, unfortunately, do happen. But our opponent's going to get in on this one, and I definitely want to post this one up because our opponent was off to a wonderful start. Um, they did not give up once we got down Ugin, and uh, a whole bunch of we got for uh, the All is Dust. Uh, they definitely kind of pushed through on this one, so definitely a good game to our opponent. Hopefully, they see this video. And, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.